Man, I, the chat box going so brazy, I can't even look properly. I'm looking all over the place. Iraq, Australia. Okay, okay, amazing. Listen, guys, we're gonna get started in a couple minutes. We wanna get started. We wanna max this call out, guys. We've got a thousand lines available. So if I was you, I'll go back into my chats right now. I want you guys to go back into your chat, send this link out to every human being that you know, every living, breathing human being that you know, get them on this call right now. We've got some amazing source. So make sure you guys are sending this out. Let's max it out in the next few minutes. We're gonna get started in a couple minutes. I'm gonna give you guys a few more minutes and we're gonna get started. Let's make it happen, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Super grateful to be on this call with every single one of you guys. We've got people all over the world right now. It's actually so crazy to see so many faces, so many familiar faces, so many new faces. Super grateful, guys. I want to get right into it, guys. We want to make sure we give this, the, the special guest all the time he needs to actually just share his source and talk his truth. We are excited, guys. We've been looking forward to this call for a long, long time, right? We've been looking forward to school for a long, long, long time. And I'm, I'm fired up. I'm fired up right now, okay? Now, we're about to make history because the last time I, we personally had a call, a big call like this with this gentleman was a, a, a hot minute ago. It was a hot minute ago. It was a couple of years ago, as a matter of fact, the last big call that we had with him. And at that time, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Montel, I think it was a chairman, 100 maybe, Cat was he a chairman 100? We've got Katrina on the yeah. line, we've got yeah. Montel on the line, can you guys, okay, so you got, amazing, so you guys, um, Katrina and Montel are going to be helping us with the, with the whole formalities tonight, with the questions, but Montel, um, the last time we heard from Bryce, was he what, chairman, what, what chairman 100? Yeah. He was the chairman 250, I believe, bro. Chairman 250, chairman 250, amazing, wow. Well, now we understand, I mean, like, you know, life gets a little bit different, uh, even at that level. And we've seen this gentleman elevate to a level that has never been seen before in terms of what he's done, the age he is, the culture he's created. Uh, I want you guys to understand one thing before we bring him up because this gentleman does not have to do this call. He didn't have to be on this call right now. I believe he's on tour right now. He's actually staying from hotel to hotel. And to see this gentleman respond to us and say, you know what, Jay, I'll do a call for the UK. I'll bring the source. I'll bring the value. It, it just speaks volumes as to how this gentleman, who he really is. I remember the first time meeting him, me and Montel met him in Atlanta in 2019, I believe it was. And to see who he's become, he's inspired all of us, every single one of us, the newest chairwoman 25, Katrina Wurgis, is on the line. She always goes on about Bryce, what he's done for her in terms of to see someone come from no experience in the industry to create a rock star culture. It is absolutely with 
unbelievable pleasure. I feel so honored and so privileged with Katrina Montel. Kat, say, say something. Your, 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 your co host, talk to us, Kat. Talk to us. <laughs> How are you I'm feeling? You're a gentleman 25. Listen, listen, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I'm just feeling really, really honored um, that he's taken the time, honestly. Like, he's someone that I've been watching for a very long time. I actually met him in Vegas. When I met him in Vegas, he was a chairman 25. Nate was a chairman 10, and he was so humble. I actually took a picture with them. Um, and yeah, he hasn't changed. Like, you know, when I saw him again in, I think it was a Dallas event and he was, I think this time he was like a chairman 100, but he doesn't, he hasn't changed. Like in terms of, he's a very humble individual and he, you can tell that he just really loves people. And honestly, like it's, it's everything for me. So yeah, I have been, um, you know, following at him and watching him for a while and really studying him, you know, so I'm really grateful and honored. I'm not taking this for granted that he's on this call. I put together my questions. That I thought that, you know, our team would really, really benefit from because, um, you know, just like I tried to get in the head of like some of the team, what they would like really want to hear kind of thing. So I'm excited about this. We're so proud of you because you smashing chairwoman 25 You've you've inspired all of us. I want to on a public platform. You know, you know, you know, you know what it is. You know, you my boo and everything. But listen, it goes beyond that. Like you have really lit a fire up me and every single chairman, every single leader can say the same thing. So put some seven, seven, seven. Put some fifties in the next thirty days. Next you're about to get a fifty ball. So hey, I I, I gotta. With I, these I, questions I, I'm about to ask Bryce right now, <laughs> it's done. So without further ado, guys, Montel. Bro, you already know, like, brother, this this is a big call for us, man. Almost a thousand lines. How are you feeling right now? Man, I'm excited, you know. Honestly, uh, it's such a blessing to be here, you know, with Kat. Congratulations to you, Kat, as well. Thank you. Know. you. So, Next. so proud of you. So, so, so proud of you. Uh, Jay, you know, I, I have to give it back to you for setting this up, man. I'm so grateful for your leadership, uh, grateful for your mentorship. And, and Zayn Khan as well. I know Zayn Khan's on the call, man. But, you know, to be here with Bryce is an absolute blessing. This is someone that I've looked up to. You know, one of my biggest inspirations, honestly, you know, being 22, uh, you know, and seeing someone a similar age, you know, someone that looks just like me go out there and really max the comp plan. But he's not known just for maxing the comp plan. You know, his humility, uh, his faith, and the way he really cares about people, you know, and his leadership is, is absolutely fantastic. So... It's a blessing to be here. I've got some great questions. I know bro is going to bring some amazing value. Um, and it's funny because I called him, I think, two years ago. And we had like a one-to-one -one call. I don't know if he remembers, but I was really picking his brain. And he gave me some amazing value. And, you know, he didn't even know me at the time. And, and now he's here, you know, C750. And the advice that he gave me two years ago really did allow me to, you know, go and smash out C10. So I know bro's going to bring that value, man. And I hope every single one of you guys are ready. Go drop some sevens in the chat. Before we do ready. this, hey, you know, it's only right, you know, it's only oh, right. Okay. This is an event. Oh, right. We've got a video to show just about who this gentleman really is. He came to London, in it, Kat? He came to London and he lit up the stage. He had the, he had uh, the custom suit crazy. on. I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I was going crazy. And we're going to play a video just to kind of show this gentleman, like the vibes he's on, the energy he's on. Uh, get excited, guys, because we're really going to show you guys a video here um, real quick. And this video really, really epitomizes who this gentleman is. So I want you guys to really get excited. This is the video in London, my favorite video on Instagram. <laughs> Have a look at this, guys. And then we're going to bring up Mr. Bryce Thompson in literally two minutes. Yeah. 
So let's welcome up, guys, our special guest, right? The GOAT, a gentleman that we consider family here in the UK, bro. You know, you always got a space here in the UK, bro. A room, a hotel, uh, a villa, a mansion, right? <laughs> We're going to add him up to the spotlight list. Hold on, give me a second. Let's get excited, guys, for the man, the myth, <laughs> legend, let's D750, go, one go, million go, here loading. Here we go. Here we go. Man, I'm man. We love you, bro. Uh, man, I, I, I'm gonna be honest, man. Like that, that was the the best intro to a Zoom call I've ever been on. I'm over here watching the video, just getting emotional, like literally getting teary out of bro. I really, I really, truly, and honestly appreciate all the love that y'all show me. And you know, like, like, like always, I, I always got y'all back. I'm always in y'all corner. Um, you know, whatever's going to make this thing, bro, uh, you know, Katrina, Montel, Jay, Zane, you know, all of y'all that I've, I've been able to meet and come across throughout this journey is just y'all are incredible people. And, you know, just to see what y'all have done, like you, I really look at the company and I look at the company's leadership and, you know, some of the top leaders in the company, you know, a lot of them are in the U.S., and for y'all to be in the London, creating the same culture and in in a lot of ways even better, is phenomenal. Cause I don't even know what that's like. <laughs> I don't I don't even know what it's like to to be in a whole nother country on a whole nother side of the world, away from all of the top leaders in the country, and literally create the same exact thing, and in a lot of ways better. So to be honest, like <laughs> y'all have y'all have done something that has never been done before. So a lot, I know a lot of times y'all say I've done something that's never been, no, y'all have done something that's never been done before because even myself, I can say that I don't even know what that's like. I'm sure David can say he doesn't know what that's like. Matt Rosa can say he doesn't know what that's like. Jason Brown can say he doesn't know what that's like. So, uh, you know, like I said, I, I truly appreciate it, man. And I, I honestly, I can't wait to get back out to London again, right? I had a lot of fun in London a year ago. And that's one of my favorite videos too. I had a really good time. I, I don't know if the video can really show it, but I'm ready to get back out to London and see all of y'all in person. Um, but yeah, man, let's 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 get to it. So we have uh, first and foremost, we had like a Q and A type of thing. We did like a Q and A. I want to show if you. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's. Okay. Get, let's get it going. Do you have any? Do you want to say? Do you want to start off in, in any way before we ask the questions, bro? Or? No, yeah, I was I was really just gonna say, man, shout out to you know everybody that has uh you know created some some level of success in this business thus far, right? Yeah, I know a lot of people, you know, that's on this car right now. This may be your first time in the industry, this may be your first time, you know, getting acclimated with Forex, HFX, ECX, DCX, you know, some of the things that we have with our platform, and you may feel like, hey, I I, I came in too late, or hey, I'm uncertain if this is something that I want to do. And, you know, I, I want everybody to understand and realize, man, I'm, I'm coming up on four years next month. And well, two months from now, 
And I, I said a lot of those same things, but, you know, for me to, for me to be at this place and, you know, be able to tell you in all honesty, sometimes in order for you to do what you love, do what you're passionate about, you got to de dedicate and sacrifice some of your time now to do what you hate, even the things that you may hate, right? It's two things, two, two big pains in the world or two big pains that people deal with. It's either the pain of sacrifice or the pain of regret, right? You could either, you're either going to have the pain of regretting not doing something that you could have done, not being in this business, in this business, giving it your all, right? Giving as much of your time and your energy as you possibly can to support your family, or you're going to deal with the pain of sacrifice. And that sacri that pain of sacrifice is only temporary. That pain of sacrifice is the time that you're going to dedicate right now, right? That's going to put your family and yourself in a better position for the rest of your lives. So yeah, we can, we can get to it. Bro, you could have kept going, bro. We, uh, I, was, like, I, I was in flow state just taking notes, bro. Let's, like, let's go. Let's, let's go. Oh, no, we, we good. I'm ready. Bro, pain of sacrifice or pain of regret. That's, that's epic, bro. Wow. Wow. Anything else you want to add real quick before we dive in, bro? I know you, you probably got something on your heart. You might want to share anything, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry? You talking to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we yeah. do. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the flow of what y'all got going. I'm ready for the for the yeah. questions. I'm I'm sure I got answers, and if I don't have answers, yeah. I can try to go find them while we on the call. <laughs> well, I think it's all about our first lady, the newest yeah. GT. She just smashed, bro. She's about to go fifty. Big time, big. Katrina, how old are you? <laughs> Eighteen. Oh my. God. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. That is crazy. That is absolutely, actually insane. Now, let me take a step back for a second, because I know I said that y'all are doing something that's never been done before, but I actually think that really never has been done before. I don't think there's been a chairwoman in this company that has hit chairman 25. Now, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you may be the youngest chairwoman 25 in the company. Is that correct? Bro, am, I, am I wrong? Correct. It would be correct, but there's a little uh, discrepancy with that. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to tell him the truth? <laughs> oh, she just turned 19 or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, wait, look, it, we. I, I heard 18 first. <laughs> I heard 18 first. <laughs> All I heard was 18. And even if, you know, even you being 19, that's a, that's a huge deal. I know I, you know, I had a 19 year old, uh, hit chairman 25 in my group not too long ago, but you know, she's in the United States with me. She's in the United States with all of the leaders, all of the top leaders within the company. So that just draws back to my first point of, you know, y'all being in another country creating, you know, the same culture that started out here is like a, a huge deal. And, you know, shout out to you because you you just trailblazed a new path for all of the 18 year olds, 19 year olds that that are just like you. So I'm happy to hear that. So, so, the cat, man, I'm going to have to I'm going to I'm going to have to pop the bubble here, man. We have to tell well, him the truth. It's only right. It's only right. You tell Bryce the truth, man. Tell him the truth. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get to that later. But BC, um, Question for you, bro. I think before we even go into like, the actual formalities, I think it would be good to ask you for your story, man. I feel like a lot of people have seen the come up. You know, I, I remember seeing you at C10 in in, uh, in Atlanta and to see your your growth till now, bro. I think a lot of people have they see the life, they see the they see the chain, they see the they see the <laughs> they, they, they see Beverly Hills, they see right. the, the, the Chrome Hearts, but they don't really know. <laughs> I know the Chromies. So what's your story, bro? Like, what's what's really who's Bryce before even I am, and and what was he? You know, what's the story? What's the glow? What's what's the, what's the journey? Uh, so you know, I got I got introduced to this business in 2017. Um, this is my you know I I was I was familiar with the industry. I was familiar with the industry because you know I grew up watching some of my parents. Right, I grew up watching some of my parents. You know, uh, in 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 companies prior to to being in this one. And I never really understood what was going on. I just remember watching videos and, you know, seeing them do presentations in the house. And, you know, I never saw them really gain massive success. I saw them go from company to company. I never really knew and understand exactly what 
you know, what they were doing. And then when I, when I got reintroduced to the, to the industry in, in 2017, I kind of, you know, it's almost like I had a flashback. It's almost like it was deja vu to some of the things that I were, I was hearing. And in all reality, I never really was, I never really was interested, but what I was interested was in making money, right? I was interested in making money and I made money. I made money, you know, pretty fast, pretty quickly for the, for the first time trading Forex and not necessarily knowing what I was doing. And I, you know, I was one of those guys that was like, you know what, I'm going to make a million dollars trading. Like I'm going to get rich from actually investing. I'm going to get rich from actually making money. Right. So that, you know, that, that actually, that, that ship kind of turned in a different direction after I blew my first account. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I blew my account, but you know, I, I want to learn more. And as I started learning more, I blew more accounts, right. I, I, I blew more accounts, but I started making even more money trading. And, you know, as I, as I grew and I learned more and I started getting a lot more comfortable with the space, I started understanding the, the power, right? I think a lot of people, you know, they you understand the, the power of making money, but you don't understand the power of what the money can do for somebody else, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I, I had a lot of different, you know, close friends around me on, on, on a campus with me and they, you know, they were in the same boat that I was. They wanted to make money and they wanted to, you know, be able to support themselves while on campus. And I started introducing a lot of my friends and I, I took that, that uh well actually i got this concept from david literally yesterday we were on the phone and he says you know the, the the best leaders are okay with eating last right the best leaders are okay with eating last and that's you know as as young as i was at the time i was 20 years old i had to understand that like some of my friends that were you know younger than me my the same age as me maybe even older i had to be that leader and say hey it's not about it's not about how much you know money or how much success I gain, true happiness comes from the success that you create for others. Mm -hmm. And you may notice, and some of you may can, you know, you may be able to attest to this same experience, but there's times where I may have blown my account or there's times where I may have not made a lot of money trading, but I looked at my chats and everybody else made money. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if I made money too, right? I was just happy that you guys were able to, to see the benefits, see the, see the uh, progress, see the success out of what we have access to. And that's when I understood, like, you know, this, this business isn't necessarily about, you know, the success that happens for you initially, that's gonna come naturally by you focusing on creating success for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now we look up two years, three years, four years down the line. And my first two years weren't, my first year wasn't the best. I made less than 10 grand, right? I didn't have a job. And, you know, some of you may not have a job, and you'll understand less than 10,000 US dollars for the year is not a lot of money, right? It's hard to survive off that. Mm -hmm. And even my year two, I, you know, I didn't hit chairman. You know, I wasn't, I, I think I, I hit platinum 5,000 inching close to my year two. And, you know, once I got to just around year two, I finally hit chairman 10 and my business exploded, right? My business exploded because at that moment, Chairman Tim was such a you know big deal to everybody within my circle. We we didn't even know a Chairman Tim personally, right? We didn't know anybody personally. There wasn't somebody that we can you know go call on every single day like there is today. So for me to hit Chairman Tim for the first time, you know, I became the first Chairman Tim in all of my organization's lives, right? Like that they they had they now they could say they they knew a, a Chairman Tim personally. And from that moment on, you know, people started hitting platinum 5,000, chairman 10s, chairman 10s, chairman 10s. I made a goal in, in the beginning of, of 2019. Um, I was the only chairman 10 at the time, January of 2019. I actually still, I think I still had a video on my page. I said, hey, you know what, by the end of this year, um, I want to help, you know, I want to help produce at least 10 to 20, I'm sorry, 20 to 30 chairman tens and above by the end of 2019 that was at the beginning of 2019 i was the only one at the time mind you i it took me two years to hit chairman 10 but i set that goal out and the numbers didn't actually add up but when you have vision the numbers don't have to add up right because you know the numbers is that comes from your site your vision is limitless it doesn't necessarily have to add up so by the time 
I got to the end of 2019, we had well over 30 chairmen and I hit chairman 250, right? I was chairman 10 at the beginning of 2019. I closed out 2019 as a chairman 250. So a complete total life change. And then we get to 2020, the beginning of 2020, I had a, you know, I had the, the, the second I Millennials event in January, which, you know, totally exploded my business. Um, and I got, you know, I, I did an event in February and for the first time ever, I got on stage and everybody asked me, Bryce, what's your, what's your date for Chairman 500? And at the time I was, I was, I, I was just a little over, you know, Chairman 250, right? I still needed like almost 15,000 more people for, for Chairman 500. And I said, you know, at the end of February of 2020, I said, hey, you know what? Chairman 500 by July 2nd of my birthday. Numbers don't necessarily add up. 15, adding 15,000 people to an organization in less than six months doesn't sound like something that would usually happen, but it happened, right? Post, post London, the pandemic hit, everybody went in their homes. I had made that goal before the pandemic hit, but you know, somehow, some way a pandemic hit, everybody's in their homes. And as you all may know, once the pandemic hit, the business started exploding again. And from that date, two months later, I hit Chairman 500. Less than two months after that, I moved to LA. And while I'm in LA, I hit Chairman 750. And now, you know, I look up here I am today, Chairman 1 million isn't open and I'm not even, I'm, I'm thankful and I'm grateful because I'm, you know, now I'm not, I'm not shooting or I'm not motivated by a rank. I'm, I'm solely motivated by helping everybody else get to the next level. There's no next level for me as far as right now is concerned. So now my full, you know, my, my motivation to keep going, my motivation to continue to do events is solely based off getting my brothers and, and my leaders and the people that have you know, built this thing with me and the people that I'm closest to helping them get to where I'm at. So that's my story in a nutshell. BT. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Put some seven, seven, sevens, man. That, 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 that's, that's amazing, bro. You know, you know what I respect about you, B, is you're, you're authentic, man. You're authentic. You know, you just flow. That word flow state, that should be your middle name, bro. <laughs> Bryce, flow state. I might get a that. tattoo or something. So oh, maybe I'll, I'll get a matching one, bro. I got you. <laughs> right. So I appreciate you, man. So we're going to, I mean, hand over to, to, to wonderful Katrina for her question. And then uh, we'll, just go, <laughs> we'll just go around in a circle until. Oh, and, and Katrina, I, I totally apologize. As to you, right? my, look, my, my mom raised me right. I, I could have sworn I heard, I heard out the side of my ear somebody said you like, I, I, I thought I heard a teen or something like that. So I'm thinking like, oh, okay, she must be 18 or 19. I'm, I don't know. So I just asked off the whim because oh I thought goodness. I heard it. But look, I'm, look, I, I'm, I'm totally, res I respect y'all with all my heart. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> y'all forgive me, please, please. I, I owe, you, I, look, I owe you dinner or something. I owe you dinner or something. Let me, let me send y'all some a voucher to your favorite restaurant or something. Oh, yeah. Would rather have the dinner with you, so. <laughs> Let's do it. Hey, look, next time I'm in London, dinner's on me. <laughs> we accept. <laughs> Amazing. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. All right, cool. So, um, babe, are we doing it one? Yeah, so you and then Montel and myself. I and mean, we're going to be finished about maybe quarter past 10 or something like that. We've got, we got, we got a good half an hour. Okay, so thank you so much, Bryce, for getting on here. But um, the questions that I'm asking, they are like, I'm putting myself in the shoe of individuals, like, you know, what would help them, okay? So my first question to you is, what is your best advice for someone who feels stuck at a rank? Was there a time you felt stuck at a rank? And what did you do to move past that rank? What should they do? Um. So I, I'm going to go from a, from a first and foremost, let's 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 just think about the mentality. You know, for one, uh, as far as you know, staying motivated, or if you feel stuck, or if you feel unmotivated, or if you feel like you can't move forward, for one, you got to start surrounding yourself more with people that have more. You got to start talking to people that have more. You so you got to change your environment. Most of the time, if you feel stuck, that means you're not as motivated as you put you possibly can be. And the only way to, you know, you know, reach your maximum level of motivation is to change your environment to where 
people have more things are you know complete you know may may not be technically in reach but that desire builds up and when that desire builds up that motivation builds up and when that motivation builds up the one thing that i think you know everybody every, everybody can do right now everybody everybody can do right now is work harder mm. right people ask me Bryce how can you be you know how can i be more original right how can i you know stand out well you know, some people have natural born talents. Some people have, you know, natural personalities that work well within the business. What can separate you from them? The work ethic. The work ethic beats talent all day. Everybody that's on this call right now, you got to look at the rank that you're at, right? You got to look at the place that you're at. If you can say that there's somebody else in the business at the same rank as you, but they work harder, you obviously can do something different today. A natural born talent, we can't control that. But the way we work, right, that's a decision. And that's a decision that can be made today that's ultimately going to get you to the next level. Now, as far as the physicality, right, a lot of people feel like they can't get to the next level. And most of the time, this is what I hear a lot of. And, you know, I want everybody to actually drop a one in the chat if this has ever been you. You ever felt like you had a dead leg? Right. Or you had you felt like, hey, I'm working on my last leg or I feel like I have a weak leg. Or I feel like, you know, two legs of my business are moving the way that they the way that I want them to. But I feel like this one just isn't doing it and I feel stuck. But right? I feel like all of us have felt like that at some point. And if you haven't, you may run into that problem. But here's the thing. Right. This is the physicality. This is the way that I think. Right. If I have a if I have a dead leg, right, let me think, okay, cool. I may be a platinum 2000. I may be a platinum 5000. I may be a platinum 600. I may be a platinum 1000. Let me go platinum 150 again. Let me go platinum 150 again. My, I, got, I got two strong legs or I got one strong leg. Within this last leg of business, let me go back in the phase. I see somebody just dropped. Let me go back in the phase one. Right. Because you may be so stuck on thinking, hey, the next level for me is platinum 5000. That's keeping you away from doing and putting in the work that re that's going to be required to get that last leg moving. And that and that that work ethic and that mentality is you going back into phase one thinking, OK, cool. I need to put three people in the business to hit a rank. Right. Three people. Or, hey, you may be a, you may be a chairman. You may be a platinum 5000. Let me go platinum 600 again. Right. Let me go platinum 1000 again. Right. Let me let, let me go back into phase one. Mm -hmm. Right. The work ethic I was putting in then. Right. The belief I had then the motivation I had then. Because sometimes most people, hey, you think, hey, I can't hit platinum 5000 tomorrow. But do you believe you can hit platinum 150 tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Right. If you get so stuck on thinking, hey. I can only inch closer and closer to where I want to be. That might, that might be the mentality that's keeping you away from where you want to be. Maybe I need to change where I want to be to where I thought when I was in phase one. When I was in phase one, I wanted to be a platinum 150. So in order to get my business moving again, how did I get my business moving in the first place? I hit platinum 150. Sometimes... Sometimes here's the thing, and, and even for people that may have lost part of their business, right? I'm going to come at it from a different angle. You may have lost part of your business, or you may have dropped the rank, right? Or you may have lost uh, some of your income. We've all been there. And if you haven't been there, you may be there at some point. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're a platinum 5,000, or if you hit platinum 5,000, but you're no longer at that rank, or you're hit, you hit platinum 1,000, and you're no longer at that rank, you got to understand and be real with yourself and say, hey, you know what? right? To the public, to the outside world, I'm a platinum 1000. But at the end of the day, I know, God knows, my upline knows what's in my back office right now, right? I'm a platinum 1000 to the outside world. But as far as my work ethic, it needs to match up with my bank account. If my bank account says zero, I need to put in the work like I got zero dollars in my account. If the world sees me as a six figure earner, but I'm really not that in the back office, or I'm really not at the rank that everybody sees in the back office. I need to go back to the level that I'm really at as far as work it to, to get back to where I've been. Very much. Wow. 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 Absolutely Perfect. love that, bro. I mean, the chat box is going crazy with the value. Uh, good to see you, by the way, man. How you feeling? Are you good? 
I'm feeling great. I like this structure. I might steal this. <laughs> <laughs> this question to end, I like this. I like this. <laughs> Bro, so my question for you is, um, you know, like you said, so in two months, it's going to be a fourth year. Uh, when did you have that eureka, you know, that breakthrough moment or event? And uh, what was it and what caused that breakthrough moment for yourself? Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I think I had a few different breakthrough moments. Um, you know, the, the first breakthrough moment was, you know, when, of course, you know, a lot of people know this story because I've told it so much was when I was a, you know, I was a platinum 5,000. And, you know, the, the thing is, a lot of people don't know this, right? And now I'm going to, I'm going to actually add on to the story. But when I was a platinum 5,000, you know, I, I dealt with, well, not even, not even necessarily, I don't want to say I dealt with it because it's not, it wasn't something negative. It was actually a positive, but I, I witnessed somebody come into business after me and reach levels of success that I hadn't yet. So, or in other words, I got passed up, right? I, you know, I, when, when I came into business, there were other people that came in the company after me and hit chairman 10 before me. But for those people, like when you when you get passed up or when you see somebody reach a level that you haven't reached yet, whether they came in the business before or after you, you do one of two things. You're either going to get encouraged and inspired or you're going to get discouraged and unmotivated. You got to go to that left side, right, of being inspired and motivated, right, by other people's success. Because for me as a Platinum 5000, Instead of getting discouraged and upset with myself because I've been there for so long, I looked at the people that passed me up. I looked at the people that came in after me and got success that I hadn't yet. And I got motivated because at that point, instead of me saying, hey, I don't have the resources they do. I don't have the leverage they do. I told myself I'm not working hard enough or there's something that I need to add on to what I'm doing. So I went to go seek those answers. I reached out, you know, just for example, I reached out to Riyadh Jones. Before he even knew who I was, I DM'd, I DM'd him on Instagram and I said, hey, you know what? He wasn't even following me on Instagram at the time, but I'm following him trying to figure out what's going on. Right. So I reached out to him. Grateful enough, man. I, sh I, I thank Riyadh Jones so much, like super humble, great leader, awesome, you know, father. Right. Awesome husband, just an awesome figure of success and just an example of a man. Right. He, he humbly reached back out to me and told me to come to his home. So I went to his home. And I'm, I'm literally dissecting, you know, him as a person. I'm dissecting him as a leader. I'm studying him. I'm just looking at, looking around the room. I'm, in, I'm asking questions. And, you know, it was at that moment that, you know, he told me one thing. One, you got to backtrack your success, right? He told me to backtrack my success because how can you necessarily know where you, you know, how can you teach somebody else how to get to where you've gone if you don't know yourself, right? And you may feel like, hey, I really know, but have you studied you? You're studying everybody else, but have you studied you, right? Because in reality, you have success that people don't. You do. You have success that people don't. No matter where you've been, no matter where you are, you have something that people don't. So as much as you study the next level, you got to study yourself as well. Because what you've done, right? Obviously, you've done something right to get to where you are. You got to figure out what that is, right? And you also got to fine tune it for the next person to follow. So that's how I got through my first breakthrough. Now, my second breakthrough, I would, I would say was around Chairman 100, right? Chairman 100. I had, you know, uh, right when I, right after the Dallas event, they dropped a huge promotion, right? Huge promotion. I don't know if y'all remember, right? But they dropped a huge promotion where they dropped the price, I think, for the first time. I think the company, that was the first time the company dropped the price and the company almost doubled, including my business, <laughs> right? My business almost doubled. I, I hit chairman 250 right out the gate like my team was already super motivated super passionate business was in full-fledged momentum and you know not only did i hit chairman 250 i smashed through chairman 250 and as soon as that promotion ended the business started backpedaling 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 and at that moment i understood you know people don't people don't recognize problems until their results are a reflection of it so you may feel like, hey, your business is a momentum. You may say, hey, you know what? Things are moving good. But here's the thing. 
even when they're moving good, that's when you should be even more scared. When they're moving bad, you should be less scared than when they're moving good. That's how you get to the next level. That's the difference between you and a, a, a leader and an extraordinary leader. Somebody that has success and somebody has unexplainable, extraordinary success. You have to be more scared of not moving forward than you are being pulled back. It's not about, it's not about how much success you obtain. It's about how long you can obtain success. Mm. Because, you know, you can hit chairman 250, chairman 100 for a month and lose it. You can hit chairman 10. You can hit the next level for a month and then lose it. But it's not about how much success you obtain. Like I said, it's how long you can obtain success. I want to be rich not for a year. I want to be rich forever. I don't want to be successful for a month. I want to be successful forever. And the only way, only way I'm going to obtain success over a long period of time is if I get more scared of not moving forward than I do being pulled back. And as the chairman of 100, after that, you know, that big pullback when the, when the promotion ended, I understood at, at, at that point, when my business is moving good, that's when I'm going to really start focusing on what can I do next to keep this thing elevated rather than, hey, being reactive and waiting for my business to pull back for me to start doing something different. And while you're on that point, bro, what were some of those things? If you remember, what were some of the things that you could remember that you said, hey, today I'm going to act on this before the business starts to move backwards? All right. So for one, I think <clears throat> I think a lot of people don't start planning events until their business starts falling. Wow. So even me, I started doing this. I started, hey, as soon as I left the event, before we left the event, we would already be planning for the next event. That's something that I started doing because a lot of people, they say, hey, you know what? Let's plan, plan, plan for an event when in reality, you should plan, plan, plan for that event but also have the next event in mind, at least the date. So this is what I started doing. I started moving from event to event, event to event. Mm -hmm. So before that event ended, before everybody went home, right? Before everybody went their separate ways and reflected on what just happened, we're already in the mindset of thinking we're already planning for the next event. We're not waiting for the business to pull back or the business to get stagnant before we start planning for something that we know is going to push it forward. Wow, bro, listen, I know it's not my turn. I, I just got to grab this one last question for you, though. Okay, bro. So, so I know you, you're very key when it comes to planning events. For everyone on this call, what's the recipe? What makes an event an event for you? What are some of the things that need to happen on event day for an event to, to be ran smoothly and successfully? Um, I think, you know, for me, I, I, I've learned and, you know, the events I've planned have gotten better, better and better and better. And even this event, you know, that I'm planning right now, I personally, you know, full fledged believe this will be the biggest event that we've had thus far, like period in industry wide. And the, the reason I think that is because, you know, the first event, I solely relied on myself to plan it. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to plan this for my entire organization. And then the second event, I had a team of people outside of my business. Now, this third event, I said, hey, you know what? Instead of me doing this myself and with my, I want to be inclusive with my core group of leaders. Like, I want to be inclusive and I want us to plan this together. Of course, everybody doesn't need to be involved, right? Because there's a time and a place for everything. But, you know, if, if you've reached a certain level, right? If you've, if you've been in this thing over a certain period of time. Right. If, if you can consider yourself one of those four groups of leader in a specific organization, then we should be planning this thing together. We should be working together. It shouldn't be just one person. You can go very fast by yourself. You can go far together. And, you know, like I said, that just goes in, into like how long you can obtain success. You know, I can't I can't always do this by myself. And you, <laughs> The, the best, the, the biggest success stories are the success stories built from a team. We build these organizations as a team. 
So even the things that go into building these businesses or these teams can still be like can still be built with the team, can still be created with a team. Events are essential to building a business. We build the business as a team. So I can even get in even more in detail and say, hey, you know what, even with events, let's build and work this thing together to create, you know, something even more massive and beneficial for everybody. But, you know, there's other things to it. That's just one example. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. That's super Always. Cool. Those are great questions. Thank you, Montel. <laughs> you took my advice. That's a huge one, man. That's a huge one. That was a great question. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, no. No, I said that was a great question. Bro, that was, and then when you said study you, that's just epic, man. <laughs> Bro, I'm just soaking it all in, man. I'm excited. I feel like a, I feel like a, a new customer again, man. So, uh, BT, we actually got Mr. Zane Khan, our Chairman 100, on the line as well. He's oh, man. seven seven sevens. I want to actually remove myself out of the way and spotlight his video. He's gonna come on and give you a question with Zane, and you know Zane BT man, literally trailblazer for us in the UK. Um, to see what he's done for us, man, and it's incredible, bro. So Zane, we love you, bro. I'm gonna move myself out of the way, and then we're gonna add Mr. ZK on to share his uh, question. Let's Mr. do it. Let's do. How's it going, man? How's it going? My boy, always clean as it is. <laughs> Every time I see you, what's going on? Now, that's you, man. That's you. I still remember the day. Um, you know, Bryce was, was someone as, um, you could say like a, like a, like a diamond in, 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 in the rough, you know, within our, within our team and no, not within our team, just within our company as it is, uh, Montel Jr. You remember we went in, we were in, we were in Atlanta and it was, it was an event that I wasn't supposed to go to. It was cause I was having my son in, in March. So I wasn't going to go to Vegas. I said, to, I said, to David, I said, I'm going to come to Atlanta in January. So I came to Atlanta and um, David was telling me about this, this guy, Bryce, you know, he's, he's going to be speaking. Um, the day before um, we had a leadership meeting and you wasn't there, Bryce. And they said that you're, DL was saying he's flying in from Dubai. And I was like, he's chairman now, so you're flying from Dubai now. So um, he, he wasn't in the leadership and they were like, oh, so he's new, but he, he ain't here today, but he's going to speak tomorrow. I was like, okay, no, we, we'll see him tomorrow. And then, um, you know, you came on stage, you were slick. You just got promoted to Chairman 10, and the rest was history. I think that year, you went from C10 to C250 that year. Um, right, right, right. We were, we were hearing about you. We were hearing about Justin. Um, so all in all, I want you guys to understand, everyone that's on this call, if we have access to someone who's making half a million, $750, $1 million a month, believe me when I say that does not happen in the real world and we know this but sometimes we need to hear it and you know whenever when I even when I was spending time with, with David sometimes just because you know him you kind of have that that love and relationship but sometimes you don't have that you don't you don't you don't remember that this guy's actually making you know a million a month or two million a month right right <laughs> uh, so I, I, actually, I just spoke to David and just, just so you guys know David has made multiple millions outside of I am this year outside more than what he's made in I am so these guys are not only going to teach us about what we're doing inside this company, but also what to do with our money. So Bryce has been, a, it's been great listening to you, man. I've been on the call the whole way. Um, I think this structure really works with the questions. Um, Jay, Martel, Kat, you guys have done an amazing job setting this up. So, you know, I'm here for it, man. I'm just here for the, for the, for the questions and the answers. Um, but I had something in mind for myself as well. That I wanted to ask you Bryce, because obviously, um, you know, you came in and you done something that probably hasn't been done in the industry, you know, not just in the company, but in the industry. And, and that's probably why um, you're highlighted today as, you know, one of the, one of the industry leaders, not just one of the company leaders. So what do you think that shift was mentally? You know, what do you think for you was the shift to let you know? Cause it's very difficult to fathom 10 to 250 K transition in one year. You know, you couldn't even plan for that. So what was the shift mentally that said, okay, let me just, you know, take my group, you know, because you never rose as a 750. You got, I think you got five 250s in your group, right? Five, five or six? Five? No, nah, not three. Three. <laughs> no, five, five chairman hundreds and above or chairman, chairman uh, Oh, hundreds? yeah. A hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hundreds hundreds and up is how yeah, many six figure a month earners. It's, 
it's 10 of us now. 10 of us now. Okay. So if you look at it like that, when you got someone yeah. who came in 50, even they don't have many 25s. They might have a couple of 10s and a lot of P5s, maybe. So when you are 750 or 500 right. with so many hundreds and 250s, you got you got more 250s in your group than the company has combined. Right, actually four, yeah, four. So, so yeah, four, four. yeah. Josh, ten, uh, ten, Ray, yeah. So you got more in your group than the company combined. So you're doing essentially better in terms of rank production than the company combined so i want you guys to understand this for that to happen there needs to be you know a sense of unity intact of course but what was that shift for you now, of course it was 2019 but what happened that's what we want to know um you know for for one i think i think it was a shift in in maturity uh one and I think the, I think the business I think the business ultimately and, and just the process I think everybody should appreciate the process because that's going to mature you the most. And you have to mature in order for your bank account to increase. You have to mature, right? Your level of maturity has to increase if you want your rank and where you are to increase as well. And just like I was saying, you know, just just maybe like ten minutes ago, you know, as a leader, right, to be to be the ultimate leader. And I was literally just talking to David about this. And when he said it, it's like struck me in my heart. But he said, like, you know, the best leaders eat last and they they love eating last. And as a, you know, as as a, as my level of maturity increased, I started caring less and less about being spotlighted. Right. I started caring less and less about, you know, just the praise and, you know, the, the recognition I was given. And I started under understanding that, hey, you know what? The recognition of the people in my business is more important than the recognition of my own, right? The praise of the people that are in my business, my leaders, my core group of leaders, their growth, right, is more important than my own. So, you know, you as, as a leader and, you know, just as, or as a future leader of this company and in this industry, you got to we all got to learn to take a step back and be able to share, share the glory. Right. In order to create the story. Right. You know, and, and, and until you're able to share the glory, there won't be as great of a story, at least one worth reading. And, you know, I look at I look at this group, I look at my group and, you know, I think of I think of how I am personally as a person naturally. And like I was like I was telling Jay or Montel. You know, one of the things I learned early on was backtracking my success. We get so caught up on studying everybody else. We never really studied ourselves. And when I look at Vegas, right, I look at that event. You know, I remember I remember being in a chairman meeting and this is, you know, that was my, my first time, you know, having a chairman with me in my organization, which was Nate. He was a chairman 10 at the time. And I was just talking to David about this yesterday. Like, like, I don't know what it was. Right. And I think it was, you know, just my natural uh, just just care for, you know, him being like a like a brother to me, not just not just a leader, but more so a brother. When they told me that I was going to be the only one speaking at that event. I looked over at him and I was like, I felt hurt for him because I knew he wanted that time. I had been on stage before he hadn't and he had earned Chairman 10. I knew how big of a deal that was for him. Even though I had hit it, he had hit it too. And I understood that accomplishment was bigger than my accomplishment. Because my accomplish I had already, you know, received the recognition and the praise of going chairman. It was his time. So me bringing up bring, me bringing him up on stage, that was that wasn't something that was planned. That wasn't something that, you know, I I thought that would, you know, bring massive levels of success you know, for him or for other people to follow, it was more so just me saying, hey, you know, I want I want my brother to get, to, you know, the recognition that I've gotten before as well. And, you know, now I look back on it, we that's that same level of, you know, sharing the light has been duplicated multiple times over, multiple times over. And I, 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 I just look at how people grow their business. This is the big switch for me. And this is what I had to understand. Like, what what's the difference between me and all of the other leaders or what's the difference between you know 
you know, people that have crazy massive results and, you know, people that may not have the same level of results. And I think it's the switch of turning your leaders into family. You got to look at your, the, the three to five top leaders in your business, everybody on this call, you got to look at the three, five, three to five top leaders in your business, right? In your organization. If one of those people were to fall off, right, right. two just, of them, just, just three just on of them. That. How, how would you define the three to five? What would be the three to five to you? Say again. So how would like, you identify? You, you broke up. The, can you hear me? Yeah. How would you identify the three to five leaders? You know, you spoke about three to five. What would, what would make them the big leader for you? <laughs> But I, 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 I heard the, the question, but you still breaking up a little bit. How would I identify the three to five uh, leaders? So it's, you know, you can you can look at it as rank or you can look at it as, you know, influence in how you've built your organization. Right. Who has been around the longest? Right. Who is who has been who has stuck with you the longest? Like I said, it's not about how much success is about how long they've held success or how long they've been around for the you know for the story you know people people love to be a part of the outcome not everybody loves to be a part of the process who's been a part of the process that has in turn helped you know create the outcome right zane are you there you're clear you're clear i can hear you loud and clear all right cool so you know that's that's how i would identify my leaders you know, and it's it's not just three to five. It's 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 a lot at this point. It's you know at least ten to twenty people that I can think of off the top of my hand that have literally been around since I was a platinum one thousand up until today. And not all of them have the same levels of success, but they all do have success, and they are all instrumental in creating this movement that we have within this company. So, you know, I look at I look at my leaders, it could be three to five, it could be five to 10. You got to ask yourself, if this person were to leave my business, would I still have a relationship with them? And if the answer is no, you can't expect for that person to be in your business tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't expect for that person to be in your business next month. Now. And on a, on a, from another angle, right, you look at those three to five people, those five to 10 people, if those people were to fall off fall off from your business what would you care about more would you be more upset that you've lost gv right <laughs> would you be more upset that you may have lost the leg would you be more upset or you know nervous that you may have lost part of your business or would you be more upset that you're you know in a position to where a relationship which you have with that person is on the line i look at i look at three to five of my leaders or five to ten of my leaders and if they were to leave my business I wouldn't care as much about my GB, my bank account, my business as I would. Dang, now I'm at risk of losing a relationship. This is this is business building, but your business building is a byproduct of relationship building. Mm -hmm. So before you can get so gung ho on building a business, you got to build the relationship because the relationship you building a relationship, a strong relationship with somebody in turn results with your business building as well. If somebody leaves you, right, or if somebody is in your business, they should be afraid to leave, not because of, you know, what it could do for your pockets, but because they don't, they don't know if they don't want to, if they're going to put a relationship in jeopardy that they've built with you as far as the process is concerned. So for me, that was, that was a major switch for me. I had to, you know, I had to look at, you know, people in my business and I was able to sleep better at night. You know, if some, if I lost the leader or if I lost somebody in my business, if I didn't have as close a relationship with them, I had to be, I had to be real with myself and say, Hey, you know what? Did I care more about the GV or them being in my business and growing my business as I did having a relationship with them? Because I have people in my business right now, if they were to leave, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be upset that they've left. I would I would still talk to him. I would be more upset that, you know, our relationship. Our relationship can potentially be in jeopardy because that's part of, you know, that's part of our lives that we can't we, we no longer can share.
Fantastic. I, I, and I completely agree with that fact, with the, with the mental side, I think, with the relationship, I think that's what keeps your, your business strong as well. You know, the success that, that you get. And I think a lot of what you spoke about in terms of, you know, staying successful, you know, keeping that rank, keeping that money, it has a lot to do with not burning bridges, with not, with not having conflicts, with not, with, not having, with not letting politics come in and ruin organizations because it happens time and time again. Eric Ward says 80% uh, of teams that crumble is based on external factors, not internal or internal right. factors, sorry, not internal. So um, another question I have for you, and this is my last one for you, Bryce, um, is, you know, I remember when you were flying um, and I was on the phone with David and, you know, we, we probably all done this discreetly, you know, all, all the hundreds um, and above. We're like, David, what are they doing, man? Just, you can see everything. What are they doing? What's Trade House doing? And um, this is, he said to me, he said, Zane, social media, bro. He says, social media and the <laughs> unity they have is the key to them progressing in this modernized era. Because you take, you take social media out of the equation and none of us will be ranking up probably in the same fashion collectively. It might be one, two, three, four teams. But collectively as a company, the way it's happened is because of social media. So let's say, for instance, some people on this call right now, they haven't, they haven't got a big following. Um, like probably like yourself, myself, when we started, you know, never had a big one. So what was your go-to when you first started and started pushing social media? And now obviously you must teach it within your teams. That's how it's having a ripple effect. I know there's, you know, 250s and hundreds in your team that have big social medias, but of course they never when they started. So what is your you know, ideology, what's your, you know, strategy when it comes to social media for someone new or someone who's kind of just trying to build their base on, um, on the internet, basically. So uh, I just want to make sure I understand the question. This is for somebody that doesn't have a big following or for somebody that just has a following, has access to social media and like what, how can they utilize it in general? Let's say you're speaking to both. You're speaking to both. Okay. All right. So for, for one, you know, everybody can have social media. Let's, you know, let me just put that out there. I even, you know, my dad literally just joined the business, literally just joined the business. I, you know, I, I had a, a conversation with him and <laughs> he was getting to a place, you know, he's not working anymore. So I'm like, you know, dad, like you need to be doing something. I, you know, I think that's, that's going to make you in turn a lot happier and you're just going to be a lot more motivated. So I, he started building a business and he didn't have social media. So I told him, hey. You know, even you, how you are at this point, Dad, you can have social media. Go, let's download Instagram. Let me take a picture of you for your profile. So everybody, look, everybody can have social media, right? And, you know, even with, you know, as far as social media goes, we have this numerical standard of posting 10 times a day, right? That's just the specifics. As far as social media is concerned, we post numer the numerical standard is 10 times a day. Now, of course, I'm not like counting my posts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cause at that point, you know, you're going through the motions of the business and not necessarily putting your business in motion. You got to look at the things that you're posting and putting on social media. And you should be able to say, Hey, you know what? If I were to read this post or if I were to see this, I would hit me up. Like I would reach out to me. I would inquire. And if you can't say that about the, about your posts, then it's no point in posting it in the first place. Right. You should be able to look at the things that you're putting out on social media and you got to be intentional. Right. Only, you know, the people that are following, you know, the people that, you know, know you, you know what people are attracted to, you know what people want to see. So your posts have to be original. Like I see a lot of people, they, they repost, 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 screenshot, 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 you know, post other people's posts. But at the end of the day, do you want, you know, somebody to join them or you? So, you know, you got to put your face behind the camera. You got to get uncomfortable and people got to hear you, right? Because the people that are following you on social media, they know you. They don't know Zane. They don't know me. And if they know us, they only know of us. They probably more so know you. Mm -hmm. So they got to hear your voice. They got to see your face. You got to make it real for them. Because at the end of the day, if you post a screenshot, that, you know, that, that can come from anywhere. Right. That can that can just be you, you know, just sharing what somebody else said or sharing what somebody else thought or share what somebody else believes in. But when they hear your voice, when they see your face behind camera, behind the camera, that's when people actually start to believe it a lot more. They start to see it as more legitimate. Now, in, and as far as, you know, your, 
building your social media, you got to put content out there, right? You have to. You have you have to put out you have to put out content. It's just like you know, in the same way you want people to inquire, right? The same way you want to build up your following, you have to put out content. But even for me, when I didn't have a, as big of a following, I would look at you know, uh, I would look at you know places and things around the world, or just all all different aspects of social media and just the demographics of people and i would say okay who would be more relatable to me and at the time it was college students so i would go on social media and i would look up hashtags of different colleges around the country and i would look at the students that were following them and i would follow them i would follow those students and you know a lot a large percentage of them would follow me back so at that point right these are more college students that I've connected with on social media that are seeing the content that I'm putting out. Yeah. A lot of people, they get, you know, you, you get so caught up on waiting for people to follow you. And in reality, most times the greatest leaders followed first. So just like social media, look, you want somebody to follow what you're doing. Maybe you need to follow them so they can see what you have to offer. Now you may not be in college. You may be, you know, uh, you may be a, a, a mom. Right. Look up, you know, mom. Right. Teen mom. You know, I don't know. At home mom, stay at home mom, all types of hashtags that connect with the person that you are. And I promise you, a list of people are going to pop up, follow them so they can follow you back. These are, this is how you can get people that could potentially relate to you seeing your content. Right. You may be a dad. Right. Teen dad. Dad from London from London dad, like a lot of different things that you got to think about that connects with, with your brand, who you are, you follow those people so they can in turn follow you back and they can see the content that you're putting out. Fantastic. Wicked. Thank you so much, Bryce, for the info. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man, listening to you. It's, it feels like, um, you know, as someone told me today, it's like this time last year uh, was when the lockdown happened, you know, right off the post London. Um, we can have no more events, no more. And it was just, um, it was just locked down everywhere. So, you know, we haven't heard you um, speak apart from, I think we've done one call uh, in between. So it's been, a, it's been a privilege listening to you. I'm going to pass it back over to Jay. Uh, and I hope to see Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Definitely, man. We'll see you in the, <laughs> in the, in the Believe Nation event next. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. In July. For we'll sure. Be there. We'll be there. For sure. Let's go. DT, man, we appreciate you. I mean, wow. I got so, I mean, some of the things you've been saying, the greatest leaders follow. I mean, some of the things I'm just like, wow. I'm gonna watch this recording again after this call. Uh, unbelievable, bro. Um, bro, anything else you wanna close on? I mean, you know, you've got a, a, a array of knowledge, man, and there's so many nuggets, you know, coming out. So, anything else you wanna close on, bro? As because it's call, anything else you it's on your heart right now? Um, yeah, man. I just, you know, like, you know, like, like I said before, um, I, I think the difference maker. Uh, between you know anybody within this business is it's just going to come down to to work ethic i've seen you know some of the most you know not to insult anybody but i've seen you know just ordinary people have extraordinary results including myself you know of course i don't think you know god created me to be normal or ordinary but i think that you know he he's used me in in ways that i could have could never even imagine. And I've, I, I, I've just taken full advantage of it. And, you know, I look back on my process and I'm grateful for it uh, because at different times, uh, you gotta, you gotta, there's a time when to lead and there's a time when to follow. And during this time, the difference is, you know, and you gotta notice and be aware that we all have the same package, right? A lot of us have all are connected to a lot of the same leaders, right? You know, we all we all leverage the same platform. You know, what's going to be the difference between them joining my business and joining yours? And it's purely going to be work ethic, right? You got to look at the time that you spend specifically dedicating to this business. How much time do you spend a day dedicating to this business, right? Some people only, some people treat this business as if it's the job. This, this this business is not a job. You're not on a set schedule on when you should be dedicating. This is, you got to treat this like your life, right? You can't just, you can't grow to love this business. You have to low, you have to love to grow this business. And, you know, some people spend, you know, like two hours a day, 
two hours a day on their business. And I was, you know, I was talking, I was talking about this on the call, two hours a day, that's less than 10%. Two hours is less than 10% of the day. So, you know, a lot of these Zoom calls are 30, 30 minutes each. And you may say, hey, you know what? I was on four Zoom calls today. I did four presentations, right? Collectively, that's only two hours. So even though you did four and they were 30 minutes each, right? That's that's less than 10% that you spent dedicating to your business. And you got to get to a place where, hey, we're not in that 10%, that 30%, that 50%. We're in that 90 90 to 100 percent of our day is dedicated to our business, even the time that we're asleep. A lot of people think, hey, you know what? How can I dedicate the time I'm asleep to my business? Well, I don't know if you know y'all can agree, but when your mind is so focused on something, like all day long, even when you go to sleep, you dream about it, you think about it, right? It shows back up in your dreams. And that time that you spend sleep, you're dreaming about. The next level, you're dreaming about walking across the stage with Zane, walking across the stage with Jay, Montel, Katrina, right? You, you dream about being a chairman. And then when you wake up, thankful enough, this business puts you back in a position to where you can do something that can potentially get you to the place that you saw in your sleep. So all in all, I'm not spending two hours a day, four hours a day, five hours a day, 10%, 20%, 30% of my day dedicated to the business, dedicated to something that's going to provide not only for me, but for my family forever. I'm dedicating 90 to 100 and maybe even over 100. I'm giving 100, 110% of me to my business. You got to get to a place where you can say, hey, you know what? I can't live without this. I can't live without this. And until you get there, you can't expect to have the results of the people that do feel like that. Bryce, can I just ask you one question? Because I didn't know we were only going to do one each. <laughs> and my team were ready to actually hear the answer to like, can I, can we have just one? You asked one and I, I got one to close out in regards to, um, yeah, you, you go for it. <laughs> We got one small one. You got yeah, I got small one after you. This is a tiny question, don't worry. So um what I what I wanted to ask is what's your best advice on sacrifices that someone who wants massive success must make? So what should they give up? Like what did you give up to get to where you are? Like you can talk about a specific time in the business because I've been on your calls and I've heard, you know, when you spoke about sacrifices, could you just be as real as possible when you talk about like sacrifices that you've made people you've given up things you've given up like please <laughs> uh you know i you know i it's this call is recorded so it's not like i can say names but i've i've definitely um you know i've definitely sacrificed yeah i've lost a lot of friends in this you know i'm gonna I'm be i'm gonna be all out honest and real i've lost a lot of friends Um, But I've gained a lot of friends. And, you know, there's times where I have prayed for, you know, God to remove people out of my life that aren't ultimately going to have the best intentions forever. And maybe maybe that's what he was doing. Maybe, you know, this business is his way of answering my prayers because this business has made me okay with sacrificing certain things that weren't ultimately going to put me or my family or the things that I truly cared about in a better position. So one, I could say, you know, you know, certain people, certain people in my life, I've had to sacrifice. And it's not like I cut them off, but (laughs) I've had to leave them. You know, I've had to leave them in order to be able to go back and lead them. So, you know, you may spend a period of your life separating yourself from certain people, right? That's, that's the first, that's one of the first sacrifices, people. Um, Another thing I've sacrificed is routine. Like a lot of people don't know this about me, but you know, the, the way I move now and the, the things that I do now, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I, as far as like what I'm interested in and the activities I spend my time doing on a day to day basis is totally different from what I was doing four years ago. Four years ago, I was a college kid throwing parties. You know, I was a capital. I don't know if y'all are in the fraternities, but I strolled everywhere <laughs> on social media. Like I deleted all of those videos, all of those pictures. I, I archived it. Of course, I'm still, you know, a proud member of Kappa Alpha Psi, just like David. David. But <laughs> yeah, just like David. But, you know, at the end of the day, I even I even had to sacrifice. I had to sacrifice that. I stopped going to parties. I stopped, 
you know, hanging out with my frat brothers on campus. And, you know, we, you know, our frat, within our frat, they call us noops. So they used to call me the Forex noop, right? <laughs> uh, and then and then I would I would get some of my line brothers to join the business. And they was like, oh, okay, they the Forex noops. Like they they categorized us because we we started to separate ourselves from them. And even today, like I'm sacrificing things today. Like, you know, just recently, just as an example, I sacrificed, you know, I'm not, I'm not encouraging anybody to do this right now. Cause I think, you know, I, me being in a position I'm in right now, financially, I think it's, it's, it's made it a lot easier to do, but I've even sacrificed the things that I was putting in my body, the things that I was eating. Right. I was, you know, I was like, in all honesty, I was sacrificing some of like, some of the, the 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 happiness I felt, I don't even feel as excited to to eat anymore because I'm only eating vegetables right now. Like I'm only I'm only eating plant based foods. It's not as fun. It's not as exciting as eating a burger or eating a pizza. But I had to realize I had to sacrifice that because I just got off a plane today. I got on a five a.m. flight this morning to go to an eleven a.m. presentation drove an hour to my mom's house to get on this call at a, at four central out my time. Thank I don't know you. what time it is in London. And in two hours, I got another presentation. So I'm showing the plan in two hours from now. I haven't gotten any sleep, but I feel energized. I feel awake. And I think that's totally because of what I've been putting in my body. My body has a lot more energy, a lot more energy that I can dedicate toward growing in a business. So you know, it's, it's, this, this business is, like I said, it's all about sacrifice, two different types of pain, sacrifice or regret, Mm. regret, you know, that lasts forever. Right. And it ultimately, you know, makes you unhappy. Sacrifice is temporary to have everlasting, long lasting happiness. Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. BT last, last question, bro. Oh, you You know, it's crazy. Brandon, Brandon just walked in the room. I was going to have him come around and say, what's up? All right, Brandon. (laughs) <laughs> now nah, he just walked out. He just walked out. Oh man. Right before she asked. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this question is really for I think all of us, you know, categorically, all of us can actually ask this question. What would be your advice for the newest person? I know there's people in this call right now. I've got I've got people in this call that are starting tonight. I've got a guy called, you know, a gentleman that's starting right now. Like he's watching this call right now. What would be your advice for the newest person? Either they've started today or in the past 24, 48 hours, you know, they're on the HFX, they're, they're, they're shaking the bank. What would be your advice for the newest person right now? <laughs> I, know that, I know for sure there's guests on this course, 800 people. I know there's, there might be guests, there might be new people with no idea what's going on. And what would be your advice for them? Especially those that feel overwhelmed. They feel like, what am I going to do? What would be your advice for them right now? Um, my advice is, for one, remember success is success. And don't base your level of success off of somebody else. And the reason I say that, for one, you know, all of the people that may be new, you're going to come in, whether you've made money or not, you're going to make money, right? Don't base how you feel, your passion and your belief off this business based off of that dollar amount. I made $42 four years ago, 42 US dollars four years ago. And to me, that was like, I made multi-millions and I'm grateful because at the time I didn't have somebody else's success to compare. That was success to me. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for not even being able to have the option of looking at what somebody else has done because now, you know, people make $42 in a minute, right? Drop a one in the chat. If you've made at least $40 in a day, $40 in an hour, $40 in a minute. 40 US dollars in a minute. It happens all the time. But the thing is, a lot of people take it for granted or they don't, they look at it as, they look at it as not a lot of money or not enough, or I haven't made enough to, you know, really believe this works. When in reality, you're subconsciously or you subconsciously don't believe and you're not as passionate because you're looking at what somebody else has done. Wow. everybody's levels of success is different. Everybody's price is different, right? Just because you made $40 today and somebody made 40,000 doesn't mean that next month you won't have a hundred thousand dollar month. So don't let what happens today keep you from what can happen next year or what can happen tomorrow. 
I think we've got to take a moment of silence. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> we appreciate you, man. I mean, guys, put yeah. seven seven sevens. As soon as we get to the US. Let's go, let's go. Stake 48, yeah, bro. Stake 48. No, for sure. <laughs> That's a, that's David. It's crazy. I'm linking up with David today. I think we're going to stay 48, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> more than more than likely. <laughs> more than likely. <laughs> thank you so much, man, Bryce. No, nah, thank y'all so much for having me, man. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. For sure. Lunch to, look, dinner on me when I'm out in London. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. <laughs> no. Thank you. For sure. Thank you Peace. Love you all. Appreciate every single one of you being on this call. Zane, Katrina, Montel, love you all. Family, thank you so much. This call will be recorded. Thank you, recorded. guys, guys, guys. Last one. Let's just give a show some massive love in the chat for Junior because he actually arranged this call. So thank you so much, Chairman Junior Alexander, for putting this together. This is really the person that we all wanted to hear from, and we got so much value. So we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for arranging this, and thank you so much for doing what BT did and included us. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you oh, so much, yeah. everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>